we'll start with you. I have to say, very few of these headlines are positive when you look at a company like Juul. Is there a possibility that all Juul products could be removed? And what's the ultimate risk to a company like Altria then, who has a 35% stake? Yeah, I mean, the issue at the moment in the U.S. is a lack of regulation or ineffective regulation, both in, in nicotine and in cannabis. And, I mean, if you look somewhere like the U.K., where they've implemented regulation since 2016, we're not seeing the issues you're seeing in the U.S. And, and one of the big issues, obviously, um, dual teenage usage. And given what they're, they're bringing into action now with the PMTA regulatory pathway, there does appear a real risk that not only dual flavors are removed from the market, but also all their products, given that one of the requirements of a PMTA is unintended consequences, that being teenage usage. Um, how would that interplay then into, into Altria? Obviously, that's a big negative, given their state. They've given up, well, basically, they stopped selling their entire vapor portfolio. Uh, but then the other names across the space, that would be a positive, because one of the things weighing on the tobacco sector at the moment is fears that the oligopoly is no longer. Barriers to entry have come down, and regulation actually supports that. And so a lot of these other products on the market, like Juul, and all of these, these other flavoured products, a lot of these things where the FDA don't know what's actually on the market, they'll have to come off the market, which supports big tobacco in the long term. And Matt, what are your thoughts on regulation? Obviously, uh, Cresco just launched the largest cannabis-only PE fund, so it seems to me that you're interested in regulation for the legal products to make sure that those are the ones that consumers are buying. Is that the answer here, more regulation? Absolutely. There's no doubt that... Uh if the United States would get more involved on the regulatory side of this, then the illicit market would be tamped down, not only just on the regulatory side, but also on the taxation side. Right now, there is a, uh, a, a, a huge difference in some states to where the illicit market can thrive because the taxation in the states is too high. I think with a uh, federal uh, regulatory climate that includes some, uh, you know, uh, altering of the taxation programs in some of these legalized states, we would uh, get rid of the le illegal market, which is where all the, the on the cannabis side where all this uh, trouble is occurring. And the and the legalized vaping products on the cannabis side, these are closed loop systems that use uh, terpenes as the as the cutting agent, not the uh, awful things that, like such solvents as vitamin E acetate that this. Uh, Y'all mentioned Dank earlier, which is this illicit product that's been on the streets, and we just have to address it. Is Altria's playbook to introduce ICOS in the States and do regulation the right way, and then can it coexist with a Juul product at all? Or is it going to be all Lycos from here on out, as far as Altria is concerned? Um, well, I mean, there's, there's, there's two elements to that. I think in the long run, it's probably better for Altria should ICOS prove successful, given that they probably have more of the economics around that. I and mean, we don't know what the licence fee is, but it's likely to be more than 35% of dual. Um, secondly, I guess linked to that, though, is a big question mark. Will heated tobacco work in the US? I mean, other markets globally where it's gone up against an established reduced risk market such as vapour, heated tobacco hasn't had much traction. And the other things you need to consider in the US is um, the, the nicotine strengths. So, I mean, the average nicotine strength in cigarettes in the U.S. is around 1.1 milligrams. The nicotine hit you get off heated tobacco is generally not that impressive. So it does well in a market like Japan, where nicotine strength is around 0.4. Maybe they'll do well in Europe, where nicotine strength is around 0.6. But will it satisfy a U.S. tobacco consumer, given those differences in nicotine hit? You know, Matt, obviously there's been a lot of criticism about some of these illnesses potentially being related to THC that was perhaps bought illegally. So if you are a cannabis company and you're operating within the legal ramifications, what should you be doing? What message should you be getting out to the market? Uh, exactly what I just said. I mean, the, the pushing for further regulatory efforts by the federal government, uh, pushing the fact that your products are safe, uh, and, and that really is the message. There's a clear difference between the, the cannabis problem and the, and the nicotine problem. Uh, I think you're going to start seeing a lot of different delivery mechanisms and form factors come into play on the cannabis side. I mean, who knows? There could be uh, an ICOS-type product uh, on the cannabis side, too, that's, you know, the heat, not burn uh, aspect. And uh, again, that, that gives us something to be excited about on the industry side of the, can the cannabis industry because there are a, different, a lot of different ways you can deliver the product um, on, as opposed to, you know, the unfortunate side of the, of the nicotine where 
uh, it seems to be just there's there's one route and one route only. Finally, uh, on e-cigarettes, we saw the Walmart uh, category go away, right? Uh, do you expect a convenience store chain to follow suit, and would that be even more detrimental to Juul's distribution? Um, I mean, potentially. I mean, you could see more stores do this until the FDA have got all these products off the market, they've gone through a proper regulatory pathway, and then they'll probably allow them back on. But, I mean, if that does happen, then, yes, it would impact Juul, arguably less so than some of the others right now, because they've pulled a lot of their flavours from convenience stores anyway ahead of the time, because obviously they wanted to try and get in, in the FDA's favour in terms of when they were putting their applications in.